Okay, so let's continue talking about metabolism, energy, and enzymes. This is part two of the lecture. Uh, last lecture we were talking about just metabolism. It's basically metabolism is how good your cells are at converting energy. That's what metabolism is, the ability to convert energy from one form to another. That's it. So do you have a good metabolism or do you have a bad metabolism? Do you eat and gain weight easily? Do you eat and burn it off and not worry about gaining weight? It tells you something about your metabolism. Enzymes are a critical part of our metabolism. They make the pathway happen faster, easier, simpler. So what we want to look at here are, or will be, properties of enzymes. Okay, so what do these guys do? What's their role and what are their features? So first one, enzymes are protein-based structures. Okay, so they're a protein. Think about how they're built. Where are they built? What structure in the cell builds proteins? What are the basic ingredients, basic building blocks to form a protein? So they're protein-based structures. They will increase the rate of a reaction. Okay, they make it happen faster. That's all they do. Let's go faster. Now they don't do not make we'll call them new reactions occur. They're simply speeding up an existing reaction to make it very, very efficient. Enzymes are specific Okay. They're specific about the substrate they work with. If it's a different substrate, they don't work. Kind of like a lock and a key. You know, your, your door key works on the lock of your house. You can't take your door key and use it on somebody else's door. They're pretty specific. They will, or they can be reused. You know, once they work with that substrate, they keep working, and they keep doing it again and again and again, but it's got to be the same substrate. Um, so they're reused, can be reused or reusable. They don't get worn out just by normal use. Uh, other big things we want to remember about enzymes. They can cause a reaction to, or let's go with pathway, cause a pathway opposite directions. So let's say it was going A to B to C to D, and there was an enzyme there. Well, if the reaction was D to C to B to A, it was basically going backwards, the enzyme would still work there. Same enzyme, same spot. Whether you're locking the door or unlocking the door, you can use the same enzyme. So they're reusable, they're specific, they work with a certain substrate, they just simply speed up the reaction. They cause it to go in both directions or opposite directions. They can work in both directions, go both ways with pathways. So again, critical components of our metabolism. Enzymes are absolutely essential for our life and our functionality. Now, all enzymes have a specific temperature pH range that they function within. Okay, so there's this little window, their happy place, where they work really, really well. Get them out of that window, enzymes are not happy. All right, so temperature, peak enzyme function. You're looking at about 30 something to 50 something Celsius. You go too hot, enzyme doesn't work. You go too slow or too cold, enzyme doesn't work real well. They shut down. They like to be in that specific range of temperature 
and a specific range of pH. Okay, so optimal or specific temperature and a specific pH range. So here's the example of the pH. Okay, so enzymes in your stomach and enzymes in your small intestine. So you eat, or you had that piece of bread for lunch, that's a carbohydrate, starch. When it's in your mouth, you have an enzyme called salivary amylase that's breaking it down. When that goes into your stomach, pepsin takes over in the stomach. Because keep in mind, the stomach pH is about one point lines a little crooked 1.2 1.3 maybe up to 2.2 this is your stomach acidity this is where pepsin works but you get pepsin out of the stomach and into a different pH like in the small intestine and that's up in the sevens and pepsin denatures if pepsin or when pepsin moves to the small intestine that enzyme is denatured. It does not function. But fortunately, we have a new enzyme in our small intestine called trypsin that will continue to digest that starch and break it down and break it down because it works in this pH range, the pH 7.4 up to about 8.8. 8. So it's working in your small intestine, which is generally in the mid, low mid sevens for the pH range. So each enzyme is specific to optimal temperature, optimal pH. Get them outside of it, and they denature. Now, when we use the term denature, that simply means they change their shape. And if you change the shape of the enzyme, it doesn't function as well. Changing shape of a protein causes it not to function efficiently. So back to the car key or the door key analogy, if I took your lock, your key, that you use to get into your house or your apartment, and I bent it with acid, poured acid on it, made it soft, and bent it, it's not going to function. If I heated it up, put it over a flame, a burner, and melted it and bent it, it's not going to work. They don't work when you heat them or when you take them outside of their natural optimal pH range. They shut down. Now, most of the time when you denature an enzyme, if it's only gently been denatured, they can bounce back and get them back to their original pH or the original temperature and they function again. But if you denature them too bad, sometimes they're just done. This is when people die. So that pathway of neural impulse and information moving from your brain to your heart to your body, etc., is the speed is accelerated because of enzymes remove those enzymes, that impulse doesn't get there very quickly. And then that's when people die. So think about heat stroke, heat exhaustion in the summer. Your body temperature has gone up. It denatures your enzymes. That causes the pathway to slow down so much that it's not functional and our systems can't continue to work. We don't survive when that happens. All right. So fortunately though, all metabolic pathways have a way to control and regulate themselves. This is called feedback inhibition. So feedback inhibition is regulation on a metabolic pathway. Okay, so getting the pathway to function at an optimal speed, and then sometimes it needs to pause. It says, okay, hold on, let's pause. All right, now let's pick it back up and keep going, so on and so forth. All right, so let's take a look at this pathway. A turns into B with the help of enzyme 1. B turns into C with the help of enzyme 2. C goes to D with enzyme 3. D goes to E with enzyme 4 and E becomes the end product of F with the help of enzyme 5. Now this pathway is just going to continue. As long as you have A, you're going to get F 
provided you have each of these enzymes. One, two, three, four, and five. So A goes to F, and just keep going. Boom, 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 boom. Keeps going A to F, A to F, A to F, very quickly. Feedback inhibition shuts us down. What will happen in feedback inhibition, F actually comes back and attaches to enzyme 1. And basically blocks it, grabs it, pulls it away from A, and says, no, there's a bunch of Fs here. They're going to attach and bond to enzyme 1, not allowing enzyme 1 to react with A anymore. So if you notice, the shape of the enzyme has changed. When F has attached, look at the shape right here. It's more of a rectangular shape compared to the shape back here. So you change the shape of enzyme 1, it no longer attaches to A. A needs this curved shape in order for it to function and work with the enzyme 1. But changing enzyme 1's shape shuts it down. Now eventually, F's going to be used up. The end product gets used up, body does whatever with it, and when F gets removed, enzyme 1 kind of springs back to its original shape and then can attach to A again, and the pathway can continue. So feedback inhibition is how your body regulates metabolic pathways. Think about your thermostat in your house. Same concept. Temperature goes up, thermostat says up, oh, turn on the AC. AC drops the temperature down, thermostat says shut it off. Temperature goes back up, thermostat tells the AC get back on, and so on and so forth. That's feedback inhibition. That's how pathways work. So put it into an application. Reproductive pathway. Eggs are produced in the ovary right here. Those eggs move into, or the egg, should only be one, moves into the fallopian tube and then makes its way down the fallopian tube into the uterus. If that egg has met Mr. Sperm, you have a little structure here called a zygote that will develop if everything goes right, nine months later, into the baby. Now, during normal pregnancy, that zygote sends back or sends out inhibition and blocks the development of any additional eggs. It says, uh uh, ovary, stop the pathway. You know, the, that, that reproductive pathway, day one through day 28, that's the reproductive pathway for the general female. And it's around day 14 when the egg gets ovulated. There it goes. Okay. That zygote, this little guy right here, that is going to shut down that pathway. It's going to inhibit that pathway. Otherwise, you got a second egg showing up next month. Not a good scenario. So that's what's happening during pregnancy. So consider birth control. Birth control does exactly that. It inhibits the production of the egg, whether it's the pill, it's the patch, the shot, whatever the variety is, whatever the, the mechanism, if it's a chemical-based birth control, it is mimicking what this zygote right here is doing. It is blocking or inhibiting that reproductive pathway, telling the body, hey, shut down and don't continue to produce eggs until the inhibition is released. So the key enzyme, or the key hormone in this pathway is progesterone. Oh, this is very bad with the drawing. Progesterone. So that is the hormone the zygote is trying to produce to shut down the pathway. So take a look at birth controls. A lot of the chemical birth controls have progesterone basis to them. So we're just mimicking feedback inhibition for the body. All right, so one last little bit on the lecture. We'll get into that in the next video, but we're gonna take a look at 
two pathways that all life depend upon and how those work.